I'm the first one who can identify myself Taiwanese in my family. Nowadays, our fans are even more progressive than us. I try to mobilize them to form a party. There have been a lot of things happen in these 20 years. Taiwanese keep moving forward, especially the young generation keep moving forward. That can show Taiwan is not a part of China. What is a nice, sweet, heavy metal rocker doing hanging out with legislators? Like, why would you want to mix with that bunch of people? I, I can remember that uh, in early years when I uh, in early years, I mean really early years, because I'm 44 years old now. So back when I started the band Thonic, it was like 1996, 1997. That was the, that was the year that all those act, uh, activists who participated in the recent uh, social movements that they was just born, actually. They, some of the some of the uh, staffs in my office they are like twenty five years old so they they born <laughs> in the same age in the same year when the the band started so what I want to say is that uh, so uh, in the early years of the band you can imagine that most of the our fans uh, they are still in the ideology, with the ideology of the KMT education, the same kind of things. Like they have been through the same process like me, that we have been educated to worship uh, the dictator and to worship the Zhongguo, uh, how to To identify ourselves as Chinese and to, to, uh, to consider Taiwan as a part of China and to consider that Taiwan is the true China and mainland China and Tibet and Mongolia should be a part of us in that kind of ideology. So in the early years, I, it was very difficult for me, uh, you know, because that was, the eight, that was the years that I started to think deeper of what, who I am and what Taiwan is and the uh, history of Taiwan, especially the history that my grandparents, they have been through. That's all those history are totally different from the KMT educations. So, so with all the fans that they are with the idea, they were with the ideology of KMT who love metal only. They like Sonic because of metal, but they don't really dig into the lyrics. They didn't, they, 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 I can remember all those fans in the early years, they, they always, uh, that was not the, uh, they, they, they always post comments like, I like your music, but not your message. <laughs> That's something uh, we can see posted in Chinese websites right now, who support our music, but don't support our message. But that's happened 20 years ago in Taiwan as well. Our hardcore fans in early years, they always post these kind of messages. They how, think, how do you view that? I, Can you split the music from the message? Is uh, it the same thing to you? I was, no, because I was not that uh, surprised. Because all my friends, even my, my brothers and sisters, they are with that. I'm the first one who can identify myself Taiwanese in my family. So I didn't, I was not that surprised that my fans, my early fans, they were with this kind of ideology. I think that's just what Taiwan was because that was quite, uh, that was when martial law just lifted a few years. So, so I was like, okay, that's, that's fine. I will, I will uh, share more metal and, and uh, inspire inspire your, uh, I should say, channel your I identity, channel your emotions and feelings with music. I, because I, I believe that all the feelings that I carried inside me, uh, those feelings should be deep in your heart as well. Just you don't know. Because you live in this, this country, you, uh, all these histories happen. Uh, it, that's true, and it's not just my grandparents been through that history, but also your grandparents. It's just you don't know. So I, I decided to write more music and with, bet, uh, uh, with the quality metal I was there. Which, yeah. which came first in, in your heart, 
the music or the message? Uh, music first. And then, uh, did you then start become more and more political and really throw that more into the lyrics of your? Because you could have just yeah. stayed like a normal rock. You could have stayed like a I, normal rocker yeah. and not gone near politics. There's I, so many other topics. So why I think, get into political stuff? I think I uh, there the, uh, there are no specific uh, political messages, but you will inspire by our lyrics and to know to want to know more about politics, know more about your own country. So in, I can remember because I think that might be something wrong, something weird with my way of listening music. Because when I listen into when I listen to all those European metal bands, I dig into their lyrics. I went to library and to know why they. Why they have that? Why those bands become satanism and why they antichrist? Why they uh, write so much information about Scandinavian mytholo myth uh, mythology? So I try I dig into their lyrics and I found out that uh, metal is not just about music, not just about riffs, the uh, heavy riffs, heavy uh, uh, the the music style, uh, music side of the style, but also lyrical part. Is very important. So I, when the early fans they didn't really get my message on my lyrics, I I can remember that I in f early years I printed my lyrics out and spread to all the audience who came to my uh, concert. Even they were banging their heads, they were marching to each other. I tried to ask one of our staff in the uh, front gate to hand over all those. Our lyrics that you can read lyrics back when you back home and try to think more why we write these kind of stuffs. So that was the that I think I. But uh, in recent years, I mean, in 2014, uh, when the in recent uh, social movements during so, uh, social uh, recent social movements, all those young activists activists there have been a lot of activists have also our fans. And the situation has been totally opposite, different. Uh, nowadays, our fans are even more progressive than us. All those fans, they have been like during Sunflower Movement, our fans were in the parliament and texting us, saying, now, where are you? You are a hero. You should be here with us. You should be here. At, we are playing your music now. So where are you? Come to the parliament or, or try to, because there have been a lot of stages during the Sunflower Movement, right? Uh, all around the parliament. So you come to any one of the stage and make a speech and inspire people come. And so I just go. So I, what I want to say is that the, there have been a lot of things happen in these 20 years, right? In early years, we tried to share our ideas and try to make our fans more active, know more about Taiwanese history. And in recent years, we are inspired by our fans. We've been encouraged by our fans. We've been asked by our fans to be more active. Our fans even say that you should not just sing in, you should participate in the, the movement. So I think that's quite a key uh, year, 2014, that I... Do you see that as a sign of success? that the young fans are even more political and, and pushing the message forward even more strongly than you did when you started? I think, I think that's a strong uh, success message. Uh, that's a success for Taiwan, not just for my career, not just for my work. But also, I think it, it means that in the last 20 years, they, uh, during Taiwan's democratic movement, there are a lot of positive things happen that no, even there are ten, uh, eight years of my administration, but Taiwanese keep moving forward, it, uh, especially the young generation keep moving forward. So I think that's very positive thing. That's in 2014, I, I, that was a key year that I and my band members discussed a lot what we should do more. And I can remember about that all our band members, some of us, we were uh, uh, in the Sunflower Movement, uh, we were in, in the Parliament, or in March 23rd, when some of the students occupied Xin Zhen Yuan. Yeah. yeah. Uh, 
the right police came in and the, yeah. yeah. Three of three of our members were there as well. Really? Inside the executive yeah. Yeah, so we were like why we why have you been uh, yeah, caught or, or charged? Yeah, why we didn't we didn't been caught? Be, uh, been we didn't get the uh, charged. Char yeah, charged because we I know a lot of our uh, younger fans and friends they have been charged, but we we didn't get anything. But we should be we I was on TV. Yeah. My band members was on TV uh, on uh, the uh, the second day of March yeah. twenty. Third, but that was the year that me and my band members discussed a lot. Uh, should we do more? Mm. Because our music inspires some young people to be more active, and we are not that old, right. too old to be active. Actually, we can participate them as well. So the first thing was I try to convince those. I try to mobilize them to form a party. Right. Yeah, I. Try to convince Lin Fei Fan, Chen Wei Ting, Lai Ping Yu, Wu Zhen, a lot of young, leaders, yeah, yeah all those those young leaders, as ask them to form the party and to run for office. And then I found out that uh, they all have their plans uh, f for their uh, continue their education, yeah, or been to the military or have to been abroad for well, studying. Well, some of them have gone into politics since then, but not to the level you might expect, right? So, mm. so I, yeah, so I just decided that I might have to be the, the first one and to mobilize things and then to ask them to join my, my uh, campaign team. Like Lai Pingyu and Wu Zhen has been in my uh, team in 2015. And then Lapi, now he's she's right. a legislator right. as well, right. and so I, I think it's quite important for me. That's that's why I I I decided to run for the office, my uh, run for the parliament myself. Would it be fair to say that the sunflowers were inspired by you, but you're inspired that by them to actually get into politics, like to formally um. run? I think uh, I think some of the sunflower movement activists were inspired by me, and I, and I actually I inspired by them right. to be more active. What do you think the role of the eight years of the Ma administration had in galvanizing the Taiwanese identity? Because of course we had eight years of Chen Shui-bian and a lot of the hope and a lot of disappointment, and then Ma came in to make everything calm again. But obviously, that the um, the the ECFA, which is really the spark of the sunflower movement, and the, the those eight years of Ma, really made people question the identity of Taiwan. But tell me from your point of view, from you and your fans and the the sunflower generation, how you think the Ma years galvanized and, and changed the direction of Taiwan's future. Mm. I think I think uh, I I don't know if you have read. Uh, Notice that some of the young Taiwanese call Ma Ying-jeou as the uh, godfather of Taiwanese independence. <laughs> 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 he triggered the the identity of Taiwanese young young uh, young people. The accidental godfather. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I think uh, Ma ying he has been uh, he has been he has been to. Uh, I think he, he has she, he has been too naive and didn't really get the he, he didn't really get how I don't know if he get how uh, Chinese want to infiltrate Taiwan but maybe he, he maybe he thought it's it's okay I don't know or he didn't know and but I I want to say is that uh, he didn't found out that even before him Taiwan has be, been trapped in the the huge uh, Chinese market already actually and so how t the the question is how to get out the question is not how to get more in but but uh, but uh, Ma ying tried to get Taiwan be trapped deeper in China but he didn't realize that he he uh, the way he looked things is uh, since we have been there so deep so we should uh, earn more from go which, deeper. yeah, go deeper. We should consider it as a as a advantage. Yeah, it's not a weakness. So we so we have been trapped so deep. So we need to get something from there, 
so we need to get deeper and to dig something out. But that's not the right, because it's not a free market. It's not like how, um, whatever you want to take from there, they will allow you to take, no. It's, it's not a free market, so, so it's all controlled by their government. So when you try to get Taiwanese businessmen or musicians or artists or the movie makers to get deeper in that market, which means you make all those Taiwanese people being controlled by Chinese government more. It's not like, so it's not controlled by my angel's government. It's, it's on the CCP's terms, it's, it's uh, yeah, by yeah. their rules, right? Yeah, so, so that's why, because uh, the, during Ma's uh, administration, I think uh, a lot of Taiwanese young people realize that because they can, they see, they saw a lot of friends, relatives went to China and didn't really get that success, uh, get that success as they wished as they expected. And some of them, they got money, they earned some money, they've been uh, rich, but they've been trapped. They can't get out. They can't uh, channel their resources to other places. They need to find, they, they need to obey the Chinese rules even more. So they have to change their way of life. They cannot use YouTube, they cannot use Twitter anymore, they cannot use Gmail anymore. So they have to change their they, they are not just doing business, they were not just doing business in China, but they tried to switch their way of life into the Chinese way. So that's what uh, Taiwanese uh, young people found out during those Mar years. But I think, so that's why Taiwanese young people uh, identify themselves more, even stronger as Taiwanese, because, because they, more they found out that they have to change to survive in China. They, no, they realize that how different we are. For those who feel that Taiwan is already a sovereign independent nation that is just not widely <coughs> recognized around the world, what's the roadmap to get Taiwan to being a fully recognized uh, member of the international community? Um, I think this is a very huge question. And but uh, I think it's more about, uh, it's because Taiwan is not a big country in this world. So it's very difficult for Taiwan to, uh, to have a clear roadmap how we can go to a fully recognized, to be a fully recognized independent country. It's not, it's not controlled by us. It's more controlled by, more influenced by the international environment. Uh, so I think it's, it, so I think I, I can imagine eventually someday, someday there will be something uh, wrong, something huge happen inside China. I don't know if in next 10 years or 20 years, I don't know because it's based on the international uh, the, the politics and also their domestic, most domestic politics as well. So, so, uh, and I also believe that the, uh, all the democracies will line up together and to rethink, to, to reorganize, uh, re remanage how the, reshape how the international organization should be like. Because apparently in recent years that all the in international organizations that infiltrated uh, by China uh, that make all those international organizations does not working well. So it's, people know that. So how we reshape the international organizations, how we deal with the Chinese government, I think the democratic countries will uh, line up together to discuss more what we should do. That's what will happen in next few years. And new organizations will be there or the old organizations will be reformed. I do believe that. So if these two uh, facts will happen some uh, in r not, not near future, but someday in the future, that what Taiwan should prepare. That's, that's my, that's, I always think in this way, if those two facts will happen someday. I think Taiwan, uh, China will collapse uh, maybe 
I don't know, maybe that something big will happen in China maybe in 20 years, I don't know. But the new international organization will reshape earlier than that. So what Taiwan should prepare to should do in these 10 or 20 years to make Taiwan be more ready? I think first of all, we should be uh, in the practical level, we should be friends with all those democratic countries which should, should strengthen much deeper in the uh, society level, in the civil level, that not, not with the old uh, foreign affairs, uh, old policies of Taiwan's foreign affairs, like how to buy more uh, official diplomatic allies, how to, uh, how to, uh, yeah, how to get more official diplomatic countries. I think that's not a, not not a, not helping Taiwan anymore. So, so we should get rid of that kind of old, old school way of thinking that KMT brought to us. I think we should think more how we strengthen the relations with Australia, Japan, uh, the the states, uh, United States, and Canada, and some European countries. Strengthen the real relations. I mean the relations between people not just be between governments. The, the relations between Taiwan and Japan is very close, right? Not, that's not because the politicians work hard, not because the governments work hard, but because the societies, the people, been so close. And, and the, after 2011, that 3-11, uh, three, uh, not just uh, tsunami, uh, it, that, that accident shows the world shows both sides, uh, Japan and Taiwan people and the governments know, realize that how close, how deep uh, relations bind between these two countries. And so the governments follow up to strengthen the, the relations in the political re level. So I think, I think how we can make Taiwan, Taiwanese people make friends make a uh, deeper exchange with other countries like in Australia, uh, in the United States, Canada. Uh, we have been so close, we have been so deep linked with the United States, so that's not the case. But Canada and uh, all other countries that we think they p play key role in the international politics, we should strengthen the relations. That's what we should be ready. So when uh, we should have all these uh, countries who play important roles in international politics support Taiwan uh, in next few years. And when either of one happen, which means one, uh, the, if China collapse or the international organization reshape, either one happen, all these key countries will support Taiwan. They, they have been ready. We can't, we, we can't think what we should do when that thing is happen, when that kind of situation happen, happens. We, uh, we, uh, there is no time for us to, to work to do something then. We should do now. So we should be, there should be more, these kind of countries be ready with us. And anyone uh, happen first, then we will have the opportunity. Right now, um, 2020 has been a disastrous year for, for the globe, but Taiwan, um, its international standing is at, at, a high, at its highest in, in, in decades, in a generation, 20, 30 years. Obviously, Alex Azar's trip to Taiwan recently highlighted that, but even before that, the world has been looking at Taiwan for health because of healthcare, but also because of democracy. Hong Kong has, has highlighted that. I'm curious to know from your position, both as an activist, someone who identifies very much for the Taiwan cause, but also in the legislature on the Foreign and Defense Committee, do you believe the Taiwan government is doing enough now to leverage all of this goodwill, this international spotlight, this global standing? Do you think that this will persist? I mean, Taiwan's standing could drop off in a few years as people start caring more about money or China or other things. Is the government doing enough now to leverage its position? For, uh, for example, like uh, the uh, Aboriginal culture. Yeah, I think that's our strength. And Aboriginal culture should be more uh, light and should be uh, more uh, empowered. And how to mobilize those young uh, Aboriginal activists 
all those young people, that there have been a lot of passionate young uh, Aboriginal activists who can uh, contribute more. And so for me, I think that uh, there are a lot of uh, countries who share the same, uh, who share the same, who are dealing with Aboriginal uh, issues as well. And, and I, think Taiwan, Taiwan, I think Taiwan can uh, think more how we be more progressive in this issue because we, I think now Taiwanese people is quite ready to get more progressive like we are the first uh, Asian country to pass uh, same-sex marriage. And I do believe that the Taiwanese people will embrace Aboriginal culture more. So that's what, and the, with the Aboriginal culture that can really strengthen Taiwan's uh, uh, values in the international stage. So that's just ex example that I think we should put more resources there. And that's a uh, very Cultural diplomacy is, is yeah. very powerful. The Aussies are here, and I know they're very big on this. Um, <laughs> uh, and of course, the New Zealanders and others are very big on it. Middle powers have cultural diplomacy as a as a kind of a hidden strength. Don't they? Yeah. And also that can that can show Taiwan is not a part of China. Right. That's exactly. a totally different cultural system from China. So. It is ironic, uh, though. Uh, I think most of us know that uh, the Aboriginal community tends to vote KMT traditionally. So <laughs> but the young activists, they are very. Uh, they are very progressive. They are right. not. They they are totally anti pro China idea. Right. And I think the other thing is that the uh, the DPP government they have been into the four hundred year uh, four hundred year history ideology too much. And that's that's the that's how I always try to convince them that uh, you should you should include the history of the Abor Aboriginal culture and then you should have uh, uh, Aboriginal ministers in different ministries, mm -hmm. not just in the Yuan Zhu Min Zhu Wei, Yuan Hui de Zhu Wei. You should have... Uh, yeah, not just put them in you special <laughs> seats in the legislature, <laughs> special ministries, yeah. more integration. Yeah, and in the mainstream, in the main department, yeah. in the government. If, if you don't agree that Taiwan should adopt the language and the culture of its biggest enemy, then how can the government do something about that? Because mm -hmm. the very danger of losing Taiwanese freedom. Hmm. I think the f mm, I think there are a lot of separate uh, countries who speak uh, the people there speak English. So I I, I don't really think that a language will uh, will be the domain uh, will be the. I think language plays key role in the identity of of people in in a country, but I don't think it will, uh, how to say, mm. I don't think, I think Taiwanese people, if Taiwanese people want to be independent, it, uh, it will not be changed, changed if we speak Mandarin. I don't think it, it, we will just go to independent direction. That will not, will not be changed uh, with any uh, countries that we speak in, but, but, I think it's very important for Taiwanese people to, to, uh, to save all those languages that have been losing in the last, uh, last century, last 70 years. I think that's very important. That's because I think for, for me, uh, even, I, I think for me, I think it's, um, I think with all more diverse languages in Taiwan, you, you will shape different Mandarin. You will, I, I'm not saying that that's our responsibility to shape a new version of Mandarin. But if we want something different, if we want Taiwan to be different, we need Taiwanese Mandarin. Uh, I, I just found out that I forgot to uh, answer the, the other, the, the, the last part of your question, that what government will do to, to, uh, to save all these languages. Actually, we have passed many laws in the last few, four years to put more resources and to, uh, 
to make uh, to in all the official uh, meetings, uh, should uh, people should have their own rights to speak their own languages and. Uh, the organizers of those, or the governments, or the departments who organize all those meetings should provide uh, translators. And now in uh, Li Fa Yuan, now um, uh, pushing the Open Parliament, uh, acting, acting what? <laughs> acting plan, something like that. We will put resources in that in Li Fa Li Fa Yuan to make all the Zixun all the discussions should be uh, subtitled or should be uh, paid in, yeah, with different languages to let all different people uh, who speak different languages could, can share the information much easier, to understand much easier. And personally, uh, my last, last year I guide uh, foreign, affairs, uh, foreign Affairs Ministry to change the rule of the uh, the 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 spell the spelling of your own name on passport. Mm -hmm. So now, so because uh, you you uh, in the old rule that you can mm -hmm. spell your own name with Taiwanese, of course, but it's very complicated. Uh, you need to provide a lot of documents that you use Taiwanese na uh, name spell in Taiwanese uh, with uh, in official cases. So most 99% of people can't have that. Like only Mi Kim Xiao, he, she, can, she, she can provide that kind of document because she used that name in the, the States when, he, when she was born there and when she was raised there. But most of the Taiwanese people, they, they, they uh, spell their name in Mandarin default. So there's, there's no way that you can change that because they, they've been spelled in Mandarin default. But, but I, yeah, I try to, I, I spell my own name Lin Changzuo before, and then thank God that I uh, toured the world. So I started to use my, my Taiwanese names a lot. And so I prepare like tons of documents to, to the to foreign affairs ministry saying that that's my official name internationally. So you have, you need to give me right to change my name. But most of the people won't have that kind of documents. So I just, I just guide them to change that rule last year. Now all the people can spell their own name in Hakka, in Taiwanese, in Aboriginal languages. So that's what I'm saying, the government can do a lot of things, yeah. Uh, what do you think of Taiwan's flag? Do we need a new <laughs> flag? The current flag represents 75 years of past history. And at least half of that is a very bad past history. Yeah. Of course, I think we should change that flag. And because that flag is still hurting the victims of a white terror and who has been through the authoritarian regime that been all those families still been hurt by the symbols and the flags of that, uh, of the KMT, of ROC. So I think we should change that flag. and. Uh, but I, I'm, I don't know when, but I, I think actually most of the young people, they don't really raise that flag, actually. They don't, it's, it's not like, it's, I think the, uh, I think the young people, they, they, they prefer to raise some flag saying Taiwan in, uh, in, 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 or in international meetings, they, because with that, that, complicated flags that uh, represent complicated meanings behind that flag. That's the kind of diff difficult to, to uh, explain to the foreign friends. So it's much easier to raise Taiwan. That's a flag saying, or a banner saying Taiwan, that's much easier. So you can, say, you can see a lot of young people, they don't, uh, they, when they are in uh, international meetings or sports games, they don't really, they, some of the people they might raise the, ROC flags, but some not. So I think it's much, I think it eventually we have to deal with that problem. And in the meetings that I uh, host in the parliament, I always remove all those flags and the uh, photo of Sun Yat Sen. So you can see there, you can see that on my Facebook or all the official videos in the parliament, they, 
they the 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 meetings that I host always with no flags, ROC flags behind me. And in the, I can remember in, in the first year, all those uh, office, officers in the parliament, they tried to stop me from remove all those things. And then, um, I think, yeah, they gave up because I just, they can't <laughs> control me. So I, <laughs> and sometimes I, Sometimes I place a uh, Tibetan flags and Dalai Lama's photo there. I, I don't care. If you really need a flag, I'll place a Tibetan flag and a Dalai Lama photo instead of uh, Sun Yat-sen's photo. And then they was like shocked. And they thought, OK, OK, no, 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 just uh, keep it blank. <laughs> it's not a Tibetan parliament. No, no, no. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, we can do something about that. But yeah, uh, personally, I think that we should change that. Should Taiwan be doing more for pro-democracy, uh, Hong Kong pro-democracy protesters, offer political asylum, mm. offer you know, uh, a flexible visa? Yeah, I think the first question, the, que uh, the, the answer is yes. Of course, I think we should try to accept more the Hong Kong activists to, to live their new life in Taiwan, to support them, uh, because I think they are leaving evidence uh, what happened in Hong Kong right now, what happened under the uh, rule of China will be like. So for me, I think to, to let m more is better. But of course, we have to try to, uh, uh, we have to try to, we have to try to be cautious about if China will infiltrate Taiwan through this channel, it might be. So it, it's, it's a national security level thing that we should work with uh, the five eyes or all the countries who try to uh, provide the political asylum for uh, Hong Kong people. We should work together to have more uh, information about how, the, how China will infiltrate the world through Hong Kong. So, so that's what we are doing in Taiwan right now as well. We uh, amend our rules for the, for, uh, the, we, yeah, we try to, we, we try to stop the Chinese businessmen to invest in Taiwan uh, through Hong Kong. So now we try to block a lot of uh, holes that they, they were using holes, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> before. And, but in the other hand, all those activists that we got strong evidence to believe that they are the Hong Kong people who are under oppression from China, from China in Hong Kong right now. So we, all those people, after the censor, the filter that we believe we, that they are the activists, then we should support them. We should give them the uh, opportunities to live their new lives in Taiwan because I think uh, there are still some people who believe in China right now and they think we are lying. They think, they, I mean in Taiwan right now, there are some people, uh, I, I don't want to say all the people who support Han Kuo they, they believe in China, they, they, uh, but some extremists or some old generation of KMT supporters, they still believe in that ideology. So I think with more Hong Kong young people come to Taiwan, uh, we have more living evidence to share more uh, stories that they suffered in Hong Kong. And I think that's very important. And also, we can, Taiwan can show our uh, uh, humanity uh, that we want to be a part of the world that support Hong Kong. I think that's very important. So, so I think Taiwan should not support Hong Kong alone by ourselves. I think if there is an a international uh, human, humanity plan to, for Hong Kong people, then we should be a part of that uh, mechanism. I think that's very important. Yeah. Being an independent legislator now, you don't, know, you don't have any caucus behind you anymore. So. How difficult or how realistic is it for you to actually come up with a legislative proposal that then becomes law? I mean, you need to organize support from mm. other parties. Mm. And what are your priorities for your own legislative proposals in this term? Oh, how hard. No, this is how to use English. I will first use Chinese. If you don't understand, I will use English to explain. This is really difficult. 
，反我的第一，其实我在上一届的后面两年，就几乎没有用时代力量的 Cocus 提案，因为我跟黄国昌就不是太那个哦，所以我有我自己的这个想法，那所以我都是用联署的，所以要十五个人联署，然后再来去提案跟推动。所以这个对我来讲不会是一个困难。那尤其在上一届，我到后来已经每个议题 ，I have list different legislators for different issues. So I all I know that with LGBT、uh, issues, which legislators that I should seek to for help to to work together with transitional justice issues, I which legislators I should work with, and with、uh, foreign affairs issues or Uh, national defense issues. I have list for different issues that I care, and so how we have established good relations uh, since last term. So I think uh, I think it doesn't really bother me, and um, for and for this term, I think I I will uh, in one hand I will try to um, 在上一次的那个婚姻平权之后，哈，同婚之后还有一些配套的事情还没有处理好，所以我还是会希望可以把它做好。那另外一个是转型正义，转型正义我们已经通过三个法嘛，哈，党产、跟促转条例，还有政呃政治档案法，这个可能是大家比较不知道的。All the document, all the documents of the political prisoners has been hidden for years. Uh, in National Security Bureau, in the Police Department, in in the in the National Defense Department, in different corners, different places of the government, and they they hide all the they hide all those、uh, documents with different reasons. They have bars to stop people watching those documents. So we、uh, passed a law called 政治档案条例 So now. Most of the documents should be open, and so that's why Chu Zhuang Hui. Now, in recent exhibitions, they can they can show more documents related to different political、uh, cases. So I think、uh, that's one. And but the, this term, I will move on to the uh, uh, 侵财产侵占的归还。这个就是呃以前的政治犯他们。我们现在恢复他的名誉，他被关的那个期间，我们把他的赔偿，我们赔他钱，然后我们把档案打开给他看。但是有很多政治犯是他的土地、他的钱被侵占了，那个没有还给他。那因为那是很多钱，所以没有人敢碰那一件事。但是这个我觉得。呃，你可以分期付款啊，对不对？你可以想一个方法，但是你总是你不能说我名誉还给你了，就是你明明无罪，所以我名誉还给你，然后档案也给你看，你被关的这几年我也赔钱给你，可是你家的那个土地我不还给你，哦，你的房子我不还给你，这个是不对的，所以这个是我转型正义在下一个阶段也会做。那另外一个还蛮重要，就是那个 Open Parliament 那一个那一个呃。Action plan, 我会蛮重视的，因为就是因为我是独立的 ，independent， 在国会里面，所以我现在得到四个党团的支持，我做很多事情，不管是 Hong Kong、Hong Kong 还是 d e p a d 还是现在 Open Parliament， 都是包括国民党跟民众党都被我说服嘛。那所以我觉得 Open Parliament 对台湾很重要的原因，对其他国家不一定很重要，因为对其他国家的 democracy， 他呃啊 ，in other countries, other democracies。You have developed for decades, for even centuries. But for Taiwanese people, I think it's very important for young people to keep their passion、uh, engaged in politics. So I think open parliament or open government can allow can keep those passion still alive. What, what do you mean by open parliament? What does that look like?、Uh, we open all the documents, informations for the. For the people to research and to reuse and to and so and the 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 people the the NGOs they can propose their own bills they can、uh, 
join some debates, join some discussions much easier. hearing. But that's, that's not really a dialogue, is it? No. It's, like, it's just kind of almost like a court of law yeah. where they come and talk to you, but it's not a sitting around. Yeah. So would you, like you're on obviously one of the committees, yeah. would you be looking to open up the committee for committee meetings to bring associated parties and to sit at the table with you? Obviously they don't have legislative power, but that's what you'd like to see, them sitting around the table with you, more committee staff. Yeah. Yeah, and also I hope that uh, in a, they, can, uh, they can sit together in the committee, in the meeting room, and also we open the online meeting to let people online to can participate in the meetings as well. And there are a lot of things. Uh, I think the, the reason why I say this is very important for young people to get engaged in the politics, because the young people, they... Uh, uh, I think I think maybe you you uh, I, I think maybe you have noticed that in Taiwan the actually the younger generation they are more they 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 get engaged in the politics much deeper than young people in other countries I think yeah, yeah I think so 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 that's why Taiwan can keep move to the better uh, keep move to a more progressive more with uh, our values direction so I think so how to maintain this participation from the young people is very important. So, in, and I can sense the smell that, sense the feeling that the young people has become a bit frustrated in recent years, in these two, uh, two years, because they, what, they found out that they can't really participate uh, unless they run for office. Or the parliament, but that's not. But but the general, the ordinary or citizens. They invade the legislature. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But they need they need to participate. They need to find some ways to f participate, or we will lose their passion. Passion. So, I don't want Taiwan to stop uh, our step, the 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 speed of moving forward. I think we should continue. So how do we how how we open the government, how we open the parliament to make all those young people can come part, participate. I think that's very important. Tsai Ing Wen, uh, the first time she uh, in her first inaugural address really advocated the five plus two economic development plan. And when she was campaigning for re-election she said, I need four more years to accomplish this. And then in her inaugural address, second inaugural, she really promoted the five plus two. Is it going to happen? I'm getting a little skeptical about that. This is a very big problem because five plus two is divided into two different types. Some are easier. And I think like oil and gas are probably easier. Yes. And the state defense system is now of course the因為我們現在也希望說可以跟外國買蠻多武器的,因為自己發明也需要時間,所以他有沒有辦法馬上很快的轉換到台灣的產業也藉由這個升級,我覺得沒那麼快。所以我講的這5加2其實你還是要看完
阿扁会把很难的东西讲得很简单，但是总统哦会把很难的东西讲得更难。<笑>我说蔡英文。I mean, it sounds like a great idea. <笑>对，但是我觉得大部分的台湾人只要只要呃经济好，那他也不在乎是怎对他只要觉得这四年我们都比别人还好，所以我觉得蔡英文就会往这边。Uh, all right. Thank you very much. Uh, Freddie's going to hang around a few more minutes if you want to come up and swap cards and uh, get photos and uh, and so forth. Uh, but I know you've, you've got to head out soon, right? So thank you, uh, Freddie, very much for your time.